So, good morning, everybody. Is it audible? Now, uh, the previous two talk, uh, I think many of the concepts have already uh, been touched upon. Uh, inner products, how they are used. LFSR, Professor Gorpode in the morning talk, he talked about. My talk is a generic talk, uh, giving a kind of overview of some of the simple concepts of mathematics, which provide a strong and very, very strong security. So it is uh, uh, a talk intended for the beginners, giving them a feel that how cryptography started and where we have reached. So, if we talk about secure communication, let's see what is our goal. So, in the morning we, were, we have been talking about encryption, encryption and sometimes a little bit of coding. But if we want to secure the information, it's not only the contents which are to be secured. Ultimately, these contents are to be exchanged and they have to be exchanged either in computer network or they have to be transmitted from one place to another place through some electronic means. Third is through courier, that encrypted thing, somebody takes and delivers it at the other end. So presently, all the three modes of communication are existing for secure communication. And uh, many issues such as this authentication of the persons or the systems who are exchanging information that becomes very, very important when we talk about communicating between two nodes or between two uh, persons. The protection against modification, so uh, uh, any, any information which is traveling from node A to node B in between, it should not get modified. Somebody else should not be uh, sending some information which is false information, not the authorized information. So all those kind of issues come when we talk about securing the communication. Privacy issues, of course, a general uh, issue, but integrity of information and the people who are actually exchanging the information or the nodes who are exchanging the information, that's very, very important. So the other important part is that whenever we want to communicate, the channel should be available. So that is in our technical term we call the availability. So confidentiality, that protecting the contents. Authenticity, that is authorizing, identifying the people whether they are authorized. Integrity of the information and availability, these are four uh, bullets which every information security uh, personnel will talk. But many other issues like acknowledging the receipt of information that yes, it has reached the other, that means mutual authentication. So some A sends to B and B sends information back that yes, it is all in order. So these all uh, different kinds of requirements when we want to secure the communication. And many times we also want that the communication should not be detected, that A and B, something is going which is actually important. So there the uh, uh, confidentiality comes, of course, first, but hiding the information comes also, that communication is hidden somewhere and sent, and uh, that also becomes uh, important so that somebody is not able to intercept even. So, what is the means of securing the information while uh, it is communicating? So normally we say that symmetric key encryption is used for protecting the contents and asymmetric key in encryption is used for key exchange, sec secure key exchange. That's the broad understanding, but it's not any restriction. Anything can be used for any specific purpose depending upon what is the requirement and what is the protocol which we want to adopt. Is technography is a uh, technology where this non-detection of communication is uh, possible. 
so something is hidden in some pictures or some uh, audio or video and this is uh, transmitted over radio channel or sent through some other means and the information is hidden there and it is undetectable because there is no visible or audible change uh, in the uh, steno information. Hashing is used for data integrity, hash functions many of you might have heard uh, and uh, a lot of rich research in this hash functions uh, is going on. These days we say that SHA-256 is uh, uh, secure, uh, SHA-1 algorithm is not secure. So uh, every day some new algorithms are coming up. For network, computer network, you must have known that there is concept of a firewall. So the role of firewall is that anything, any input which is coming to the system, uh, it will uh, allow only that which is authorized to enter, otherwise it will stop. That's why the name firewall. And uh, this firewall can be a hardware as well as it can be a software also. It can be a separate unit, otherwise it may be closed in the system. And uh, of course, cryptographic protocols, uh, uh, any communication will require a protocol because when something is being exchanged between A and, and B, then some information for synchronization is required, otherwise uh, the, the, the decryption may not be possible unless the key matches at the both end. Similarly, many times in current uh, communication, secure communication, actually there is a concept three, uh, of key at three levels, something which is uh, uh, fixed in a communication for three months, something which is fixed for a session, that is suppose I switch on the system and for one hour system is on and some informations are being communicated, so that is what is known as a session. So there is a concept of a session key and there is also a concept of a message key. So each message will have another third component of key which will be message key. So all these things are to be exchanged between A and B through this. So there is some way in which these things are to be communicated and exchanged both ends and they have to say that yes, we are ready to send and you are ready to receive. So that is ensured by the uh, cryptographic protocols and uh, secure right, uh, routing in the network uh, is, uh, is also required for security as well as for using the network in an effective manner. So shortest route and uh, uh, non, uh, uh, say secure, secure nodes which, which, are, which are not open, uh, open to uh, uh, hacking and those kind of thing. But when it comes to electronic communication, then the lot of more things are required apart from cryptography. So, say unless, uh, on an electronic channel, ultimately it will go either as a uh, analog signal or as a digital signal. So some kind of a modulation will be required. And if it is a fixed frequency which on which the communication is being sent, there is a chance that that frequency will be caught by the adversary and the signal will be intercepted. So there is a concept of frequency hopping that is uh, within some interval of few seconds, the frequencies of these carriers will be changed so that the interception is not uh, uh, possible uh, by the adversary. There is new concept called blockchain technology which is used for security of the data. So security as well as for authenticity. So no unauthorized person can access the data and uh, can change the data. And for uh, other uh, security concepts, we have this quantum communication and quantum key distribution, these new concepts which are coming up, where the communication will be uh, through photons and uh, uh, it may be line of sight or it may be through uh, fiber cables. But the beauty is that the communication, if somebody wants, to, uh, is trying to intercept, that will be detected and the channel, it will come to the knowledge and maybe the proactive measures can be taken. So these are the, some of the uh, techniques 
which are used for uh, required uh, for the uh, security. Giving the summary, because we have been listening before coming to specifics, we say that this most of the time, the concepts, whatever scheme somebody proposes, the concept will be from uh, abstract algebra number theory most of the time. And uh, mo mostly number theory uh, is used in the asymmetric encryption predominantly. Uh, but uh, other part, they can also be in the symmetric uh, part. Calculus and trigonometric analysis, these are some of the things which have not uh, come up so well where some schemes could be proposed. But trigonometric, I have come across some uh, schemes where encryption is totally based on sine and cosine, 10, these functions, 10 theta, as well as log function. And that, that was a public key encryption scheme, which ultimately we were able to break that uh, through reading. But it's only occasionally somebody proposing some uh, schemes. Communitrics, I think next talk, complexities, you are going to listen. Information theory is a well-established theory, which uh, provides the basis, theoretical basis for cryptography. And there, this entropy function is very widely used. Asymptotic analysis for algorithm, again, for measuring the security and complexity. For uh, Fourier transforms are very, very uh, 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 deeply used for uh, speech secrecy systems. Uh, I will come to that specific how it is used. Coding theory, uh, of course, heavily used for error correction, communication, as well as encryption. Other transforms like cosine transforms, they are used in some steganographic schemes. And graph theory is the new area of applications to communication, as well as network uh, and uh, networks in cryptography. In fact, so some latest research papers have come in graph theory, applications of graph theory. But main problems remains that how this message is to be mapped to those uh, vertices. So that's the one important problem there. So, so if we coming to uh, generic uh, uh, things, uh, if you, you say what is our cryptographic object in general sense, I will not talk about any specific algorithm, but general thing requirement is that we have to have some transformation from message space to cipher space such that this transformation actually randomize the contents. And that randomization should be, should be such that it should have some, some trap door or some, uh, uh, some, some additional information so that the authorized person should be able to demask, de-randomize and get the content. And this randomization process should be such that the randomized thing, which we call as a cipher text, should be indistinguishable from random. So that means as much possible towards randomness, we should try to uh, get. That's the uh, final goal. But the main problem remains that this totally randomness, how to use that total randomness in a system is still a problem. That's why we talk about most of the time pseudo-randomness. Uh, 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 sequences and other methods. So this entropy function, as I've told, uh, Shannon's uh, uh, paper. Uh, so this this is one basic function which actually gives us measurement that how good we our scheme is. And uh, uh, say while deciphering also in the process of crypt analysis, uh, in some efforts, if you achieve something. So this, all, this function also tells us that, yes, we are moving towards some uh, whatever we are looking for, or we are still uh, as worse as uh, we were in the beginning. So, so uh, to achieve that, what uh, normally we try to do is that our working space should be small. The alphabet should be small, so that uh, the probability remains 1 by 2, 1 by 2. If, uh, alpha set is large, 
then this uh, uh, the uh, of course some systems are there but mostly we like to have this very small alpha set for uh, achieving cryptographic thing and modular arithmetic is broadly used why why because we want to work in finite space our alphabets will be finite our messages will be finite and anything we randomize we would like to be within that finite set so this modular arithmetic keeps us within a finite set which is which is a tool for the cryptography and permutations and random number generators they also help us in randomization process and uh, we will see some of the schemes where simple concept of permutation uh, is uh, uh, providing you secrecy in fact uh, this permutation simple permutation just next slide and after that i'll talk about so it is a generic form of simple substitution cipher you have to uh, this message is in terms of this alphabet so apply permutation p which is a permutation of these on this set of alphabets and that's the cipher text so concept uh, is simple just you have to check ch choose one permutation p and uh, then uh, get the cipher text so uh, for 26 alphabet the key size is 26 factorial which is which is of the order of 10 power 23 but the main problem remains that how to choose good random permutation so that that nobody is able to guess and uh, however good the permutation is chosen because the the alphabet because simple substitution this keeps uh, the frequency of those characters intact they just place is changed so uh, even though key space is such a large key space but system is weak because statistical analysis helps us in deciphering there is no brute force search which is required here so to uh, overcome that in world war 1 world war 2 these permutations were used uh, number of in a series so rotor based machines came into existence electronic and as well as electromechanical machine which had five rotors and uh, these five rotors were used in a sequence so input x comes here and these permutations p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 and here you get cipher text y but these machines were such that this p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 they are not fixed for whole of the length of the text so for one character there will be some set p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 which will be used for another character next character these rotors will rotate and the substitution permutation will be changed so this this was how this key management was done for this and these machines remain secure till uh, world war 2 in fact the uh, enigma machine was broken only in world war 2 uh, it could be broken because the machine was actually accessible accessed by the uh, adversary it was not because the uh, the algorithm was uh, broken there so the simple concept can be used uh, just to realize that you see that y equal to uh, x plus 3 that's the uh, the first cipher uh, in the in the cryptography which is known as caesar cipher just shift of 3 and you get a cipher text like this so cipher shift of 3 means it's just a, uh, a modular uh, equation y equal to x plus 3 it gives linear shift and if we generalize it so multiply this a by uh, so take a linear equation like this so this gives uh, uh, rotation as well as translation uh, effect and you get a uh, cipher like this so uh, these these were the some schemes where how to actually uh, remember the key because a general permutation if random permutation of 26 character how to restore store then how to transmit then that was a problem so these are simple schemes people used to uh, uh, use uh, a and b and then uh, 
primitive uh, uh, time of cryptography, these things were used. Similarly, transposition ciphers were used during World War I, World War II. Simplest thing is that here the characters, the text, they are reshuffled among themselves. So that's the simple concept and reshuffling is again a permutation. And there were many schemes which were suggested. Uh, uh, one was that uh, 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 which was known as columnar uh, transposition. So uh, the information is written in a matrix form, so written row wise and read column wise. Ultimately what is it? Say it is actually a permutation of whole of the text in a specific manner. So again this uh, this, these were the some geometric schemes which were used for realizing the permutation for the transposition cipher. And uh, if the, for the cryptanalyst, in fact, if the matrix size is not known, then he will have to do exhaustive trials and say for example here, the exhaustive uh, 5 cross, uh, it, it could be 15 cross 1 or 5 cross 3. So, uh, this total requirement of exhaustive search will be 126. Uh, but if the size increases, then uh, whatever factors you have for that n equal to 300, so all factors, so number of rows and columns could be m cross n, m and n may be the factors of this. So that gives a large key space. And then the scheme is not just read column wise. There is permutation of those columns also. So here third column is read first, fifth column is then and then second column. So one permutation of the whole text, another permutation so scheme for, I mean a specific scheme to realize that uh, thing. So this was the uh, uh, use of permutation in transposition cipher. The another important concept which was used uh, very widely uh, uh, was which is known as Hill cipher. It is actually uh, based on matrix multiplication and uh, matrix multiplication modulo uh, 26. So alphabets are represented in terms of uh, 26 characters and uh, this is a matrix which should have a inverse because ultimately we have to uh, get back the plain text and uh, uh, the information is uh, coded or uh, represented in terms of numbers and vector of 3. So, Three ve this vector of 3 is then taken and this multiply the matrix and you get the ciphertext. So for example, this is the plain text and this is the ciphertext and this is the key. And uh, uh, reverse is you uh, multiply by k inverse. So this, this again uh, was very widely used and uh, uh, many generalized versions of this instead of having 26 characters we can have uh, any uh, finite field, uh, matrix is over finite field and uh, then message has to be represented in that finite field, matrices so have been selected over that finite field and uh, then the problem becomes that how many such matrices, invertible matrices over finite field will be uh, available, that key space we have to just and uh, uh, then we have to uh, use that uh, for security purpose. For the cryptanalyst, what the challenge remains that this key is unknown. Somebody may have access to plain text and corresponding cipher text. It may happen, it may not happen. If it happens that somebody has plain text as well as cipher text, then by this equation, linear equations can be formed. So, those solving those linear equations becomes a challenge if it is over this finite field. So these equations will be over that finite field and uh, uh, linear equations and of course this size is small but this matrix size could be 200 cross 200. So in that case this becomes a uh, very very hard problem. So this hardness of this invert, uh, inversion of matrices over finite field this is uh, what was explored in this particular thing. So with these simple concepts were used uh, in this preliminary uh, basic cryptographic schemes and uh, solving system of linear equations in finite fields, uh, there are many schemes, uh, block, Lankos, Wittermans algorithm, many schemes have been 
suggested uh, which help but uh, and they have of course poly polynomial time complexity some of them better. So this is the uh, mathematics uh, mathematical concepts which are used for breaking uh, these uh, Hill cipher. There is a concept of algebraic cryptography in modern crypto system there also ultimately the cryptanalyst uh, results uh, I mean ends up with a sparse linear uh, matrices over finite field and normally it is a binary field. So equations of the order 10,000 cross 10,000 matrix will be of the order 10,000 cross 10,000 a sparse matrix how to find its inverse how to solve that. So those are the mathematical challenges which have been used in uh, this cryptography. So uh, again reiterating this modular arithmetic actually helps because it gives a well defined structure in terms of field. These days some of the schemes are also proposed on rings. I have seen uh, some uh, initial work of using near rings even for providing that structure of near rings also to provide some kinds of secrecy but it is still uh, not very established thing that whether we can get a good crypto system there. So uh, in a, spe uh, in a uh, field this, this hardness, this hardness of this problem that uh, if an element is given how to find its inverse in a field. So uh, if field is very large in size this is hard problem. Now this hardness will be talked about by sub in the subsequent talk the hardness of different problems. Uh, but uh, we understand that this hard means that you won't be able to solve it polynomial time and uh, very easily. So uh, this is uh, the uh, this this complexity of this is actually used in many of the crypto uh, graphic schemes. So modulo two, which is a very simple only element field of order two, zero and one and simplest structure, modular structure. These two simple concepts provide you the complex uh, the cryptographic algorithms. And uh, there of course, uh, uh, because uh, as I told that my uh, alphabet site is only two, zero and one. And uh, uh, then uh, I have uh, the choice of uh, representing the information in terms of zeros and ones. So, for example, if we look at suppose my message m in binary form is this, if I break it into blocks of n bits, then this n bits, this n bits can be treated in element of that extension field to 2 power n. So that means this m1, m2, these are elements of now extension field, though n can be anything, it can be 520. Uh, uh, 500 bits, 400 bits, whatever it is. So that means you have a space as big as you desire and the alphabet set is as small as you desire and then you can achieve the complexity. So the only thing becomes that after this representation of these elements, the, 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 finite, the message into a finite field, then what is this transformation which actually transforms so this transformation is this from this field to field. So this is M1 is an element of the field, C1 is also element of the same field. So the, these, this, the beauty lies in deciding about or finding out these transformations. And uh, one way of achieving that is through this uh, concept of a stream cipher which in the morning uh, first talk you heard uh, a little bit. And uh, uh, again this encryption you see that the process of encryption is simplest possible XOR. So your alphabet set is just two element and that field from two element you have a uh, uh, field of order uh, 2 power 500 and uh, but then uh, the encryption operation is just XOR 1 plus 1 is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0, 1 plus 0 is 1 and 0 plus 1. So this simple uh, operation is provides you the desired non-linearity non but the only thing is that how to ensure the good randomness of this key sequence Vn. That's the uh, basic requirement and uh, that uh, uh, requirement is actually uh, met by these two concepts linear congruence generator 
and linear feedback shift register. This is also kind of a congruence generator. In the morning first talk, uh, you have already heard this term linear feedback uh, shift register. But in electronics, real, uh, realizing it in electronics form is, is easy that it is actually a register and uh, this represents that polynomial, uh, the coefficients of that polynomial and uh, this is this feedback function, something which picks up some coefficients and uh, adds up and then it is fed back and this, this gives the uh, bit of that sequence. So this continues, this process continues and the sequence uh, is achieved. In the morning it is already told that the, the polynomial which is chosen here, if it is a primitive polynomial, you get a sequence of full order and order is 2 power n minus 1. So this primitivity and over this finite field of order to f power 2 power n, the number was told phi uh, that uh, phi uh, 2 power n minus 1 upon n. Those many primitive polynomials are possible, but out of that which one we should choose that also uh, important. It is not that every polynomial, uh, primitive polynomial will be a good primitive polynomial. So that is the uh, designers uh, thing and evaluators have to evaluate that whether it is a good primitive polynomial. But if I take just this as a key sequence generator, then my period is only 2 power n minus 1. My message may be very large, maybe the, the communication is continuing for hours, the data is going. So we don't require, we don't uh, actually uh, want that this key sequence should repeat. So to, to get that effect, there is another concept which is known as basic is LFSR, but they are combined through some nonlinear function. So there is nonlinear combiner function, these inputs, individual inputs will come, it will be uh, through this nonlinear Boolean function, you will get the sequence. So this provides you. Uh, multiplied the complexities are multiplied so much larger uh, uh, period of that uh, uh, sequence key sequence will be generated so in present day crypto system mostly these basic concepts of LFSR are used as far as stream cipher are concerned because they are easy to implement in hardware the other uh, so if we look at uh, recapitulate that uh, uh, what we use so in present day uh, stream ciphers, Boolean algebra, Boolean sequences, primitive polynomial, these are predominantly used. And in fact, uh, uh, say it's not the, the uh, as I've told it is secure communication, it's, it's not the encryption alone, it's communication as well. It's not the encryption alone, but evaluation of that algorithm also is important. So evaluation and crypt analysis, because when you say that this algorithm is good, you will have to do the security analysis. And there you will have to make efforts to break it. So all those things are important and for that, there are some mathematical concepts uh, will be used. Uh, I will come to some part of the crypt analysis later. Now, uh, this coming back to these numbers after finer fields, you see that uh, uh, this SSL which is being used in our web page. So we are advised many times that we should use uh, uh, the uh, website only when this S is there. If it is HTTP, it is insecure. If it is S is there, that means it is secure. So uh, that's a good practice uh, for uh, avoiding hacking. And uh, there this S is in fact uh, because of there is uh, SSL which uh, RSA crypto system is actually used uh, for that uh, security purposes. So uh, I think uh, the complexity of this RSA will be talked about in the next uh, lecture, but uh, just broad structure of that, the concept uh, of RSA I am just uh, telling uh, that uh, in this uh, RSA crypto system, in fact, uh, an integer n uh, is taken, which is uh, 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 multiplication of two prime numbers P and Q and these numbers are very large. So the, maybe this is n is 400 bi uh, and this digit uh, bits and uh, P and Q 400, 200, 200 like that. So, so the difficulty here is that if n is large then factorization is hard problem 
and that problem is actually exploited in this by this uh, Shamir, Redelman, and uh, Revest and uh, uh, Delman, uh, three people. And uh, the, they came up with uh, this uh, 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 result that if we take this, this of course is well known, that uh, if we take a group uh, of all integers which are relatively prime to n, we get a group structure. So this is well known. But this result they got that we can choose in this group two elements Ea and Da such that Ea and Da if we multiply uh, we get one mod phi n and with the property that uh, uh, this, this decryption, encryption and decryption is possible that in encryption we will raise this power so message is raised to power Ea and uh, that gives the encryption and then uh, this uh, cipher is raised to power Da so that uh, uh, we get back uh, this uh, uh, original message. So in the power, uh, this Ea, Da, they are actually in power and power you get one mod phi n. So this result they could get and uh, this gave a beautiful scheme uh, which is uh, still very secure. Only thing is that uh, there are some factorization challenges uh, which, which were uh, 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 available and people have tried to solve, factorize the numbers. So whenever some number is being factorized, 176 digit number has been factorized. So say that the allowed uh, length of there is 10 power, uh, 1040 uh, uh, this, uh, uh, bits means you go on increasing the size of n. So that is, but RSA is, is still very, very uh, unbreakable uh, with the present uh, 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 power, computational power. Another difficult problem is uh, this uh, Diffie-Hellman problem and uh, uh, sorry, discrete log problem. And uh, discrete log problem actually means uh, in terms of uh, additional notation, uh, if it is y equal to nx, so y is known, x is known, what is n? And uh, here, if it is uh, y equal to x power n, y is known, x is known, what is n? So these are the uh, problems which are easy to solve in smaller fields, but in FP uh, star under multiplication, uh, this is a hard problem and I think it will be taken up by my colleague in the next talk. So this uh, also gives the uh, 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 tool for uh, key exchange, which is known as Diffie key Hellman exchange. And uh, here uh, uh, the, they exchange uh, these numbers A and uh, uh, A is uh, G power X, G is a generator of the group and uh, A and Y is communicated. So the common key becomes G X Y, adversary gets G X Y but uh, he will not be G able to uh, find out uh, individual uh, thing, he will not be able to find out G power X or G power Y. So that complexity of Diffie-Hellman problem actually enabled Diffie-Hellman uh, to communicate secretly among themselves uh, uh, in a secure manner. So in most of these things, I think uh, these concepts uh, like uh, uh, these are used because if you want to design a system uh, for RSA on your own, you will have to find out P and Q, large primes, how to find large primes, that's the problem because you, you, it's not easy that you have a list of prime numbers with you, okay? So those kind of hardness problems I think will be talked about. If a number is given, is it prime or not? So these are some of the mathematical concepts which are used in uh, these. Now another concept which is heavily used and a lot of research is going on is area of elliptic curves over finite field. You see these kind of curves, y square equal to x cube plus ax, this is uh, elliptic curve. So we have a studied curve, curve, curve tracing in our school and all, but there these were in uh, our real numbers or complex numbers. Here this equation or this curve is chosen where basic uh, coefficients they are in a finite field and this finite field could be either prime field or could be extension field. So 
this uh, we can get some group structure of those on those elliptic curves operations can be defined i am not going into detail but this is one area which is being used uh, when uh, uh, developed and uh, very soon probably uh, we are going to have uh, elliptic curve based certifying agency certifying authority so certifying authority uh, like there are six seven certi certifying authorities in the country banks have to take keys from them but all those are based on rsa public crypto system so they are going to be replaced by this elliptic, elliptic curve based uh, thing because here key sizes are requirements are small so uh, there are some curves which have been recommended lattices have been also talked about uh, that uh, uh, this is a current research area and they provide uh, your tool to uh, uh, resistance against the quantum computers or quantum uh, uh, crypto analysis uh, thing and in fact again in lattices a simple concept where looks like a simple concept if we take uh, uh, a lattice a simple lattice uh, in a plane and uh, suppose this node is zero node so which one is the shortest node to this okay so this is a simple problem when uh, uh, nearest nearest to this uh, zero node simple problem here but if you are you are working in 500 dimensions this is a very hard problem and such hardness is actually exploited in this latest based cryptography so another uh, problem of mathematics which is known as reducibility problem so uh, here uh, x power d equal to y power n in this equation d is known y is known what is x so this is also a hard problem very well known hard problem and uh, uh, this has been used widely uh, in these four five five encryption systems uh, this reducibility problems has been used so uh, other complex thing like uh, finding uh, a generator in zp star is a hard problem so in, in the morning we were talking about some field where some we have to take some generator and uh, so that finding out the generator itself is a hard problem there are two ways in which it could be done another is one is that using this this uh, result that is a generator only if our p minus 1 is congruent to this otherwise uh, uh, another is just search uh, go on making powers powers till you end up uh, uh, with the one so these are some of the hard problems so uh, other directions as coding based cryptography and all those things have already been talked about i think uh, uh, other mathematical concept we were talking about in terms of designing of the crypto system but for crypto analytic uh, point of view in fact nothing is known only ciphers are known or some little bit information about the algorithm is known and all that so there these uh, soft computing techniques are quite uh, helpful and they provide some uh, uh, headway and sometimes some breaking so fuzzy logic artificial neural network genetic algorithm in fact many of uh, these uh, tools uh, we could use uh, for identification of the system for alignment of the system first which which helps further in crypto analysis of course uh, uh, fuzzy logic itself will not be able to break the system but it will reduce our key space to some extent grouping uh, for purpose so these are other concepts which are used in uh, cryptographic now 5 minutes okay so coming to the secure uh, communication part so first of all this is a uh, uh, speech communication so uh, in electronic communication in our forces and uh, army navy air force many times it is uh, walkie talkies uh, i mean the communication through a speech and uh, there the basic thing is that if you look at a speech is actually time variant signal so but this time variant signal but there is lot of periodicity because of our vocal cords so that periodicity is captured in terms of this equation sine wave and cos wave so these are the basic curves which provide the periodicity now a speech signal can be approximated 
in terms of these thing so they can speech signal can be thought of summation of these uh, sequences uh, which we known as web so so that means this uh, uh, function uh, speech can be represented something like this ft in terms of uh, summation of uh, cos, cos waves and sine waves in in the previous previous slide so uh, i summation of uh, this only thing is w and phi they will be different a will be different so that means uh, wherever there is a periodic function this fourier series in fact helps us and uh, we can use that fourier uh, uh, transform to get the uh, information of a speech in terms of a another domain this is transform domain so this is uh, where time and frequency is available earlier the it was in time time and amplitude so time and amplitude has been now transformed to time and frequency so now for working for secure security we can work in this transform domain and then get back to the time for sending it the information so one is transformation now security will be done here and then getting back so that's that's the basic concept here and these so there are a lot of frequencies so normally uh, in in our lab we capture eight uh, eight frequencies and leave other otherwise theoretically there are infinitely many frequencies which are produced by our vocal cord but first three are very important and rest are mostly noisy so so that means the encryption which we would like to do we would like to change the first three frequencies more than rest of the other because much of the information lies in lower uh, thing so as a signal uh, a speech can be in the analog form as i have told time domain or even a speech can be transformed into digital signals so anything any numerical value and uh, binary signal where the signal will be in 0 and 1 so in speech signal processing the in, the transformation as well as the encryption is done in all the three domains so so uh, uh, for for that purpose in fact for this digitization there are several schemes uh, which uh, again use some prediction lpc like some recurrence relations to predict it at all again i am not going back but lot of coding uh, is used here and uh, then basic concept on encryption of speech is scrambler and digital cipher so in scrambler in fact again the simple concept of permutation so uh, these uh, you take some permutation and then reshuffle them that's the simple concept so like here in the transfer domain uh, we divide into uh, these sectors and then uh, through some controller we actually uh, reshuffle them and uh, if we listen them then nothing is audible so that is the scrambler part and encryption part is that this information is converted into a uh, binary form and then uh, stream cipher the same algorithm once you convert information into binary form then that stream cipher concept is applicable so use that key and you transform it so this is the uh, encryption so this is encrypted image now last slide is on steganography so in steganography uh, as i have told that uh, the basic purpose here is that we have to hide the contents into some cover and cover is such that looking at the cover even original and the cover which hides the information if you so both of them simultaneously if you look at you will not be able to make out the difference so because the image as well as the speech has got lot of redundancy so because of the redundancy information can easily be hidden uh, there and for hiding purposes this information can be as it is it can be speech text data or facts anything it can be encrypted or plain and then it can be hidden in any of them so cover can be speech image multimedia contents can also be anything and something can be hidden in the other and they can be encrypted so uh, you can look at website pgp and there are 
I think more than 100 stenographic algorithms available open source. You can download and you can feel. There are some provisions. There are three encryption algorithms and there are three uh, algorithms which tell us where to hide because hiding is also controlled where to hide, where not to hide. So that is done through some algorithms. So here uh, the uh, other, uh, I told that there are some cosine transforms which are used, I will not be uh, going into detail, but uh, uh, of course I can't play. This is original speech and this is the Stegno speech where a speech has been added into a speech and uh, audibly uh, it won't be uh, uh, recognizable. So I think uh, uh, that was the uh, historiography. Uh, only uh, if we look at uh, this communication, I, I have already touched upon uh, these uh, concepts like uh, 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 signal processing and then uh, modulation. Modulation is a heavily mathematical concept. Uh, one sinusoidal is uh, uh, added with uh, some fric fixed frequency uh, and then signal modulated and uh, communicated to uh, other place. So I think by and large uh, I have covered all the things. And uh, so in modern communication system we have all components. We have encryption. So uh, a box will be there. Within that box there will be some registers which will be holding those LFSRs, there will be some logic. So that logic will give you a sequence and there will be three levels of uh, keys, message key in, uh, and all the three level of keys. There will be a key sequence generator within the system. So the total system will take input as a signal. It will convert into bits which we call, we call as a analog to digital converter. Signal in terms of bits will be encrypted by the algorithm within the system and then that frequency hopping algorithm will be there which will transmit through the transmitter with the frequency hopping thing. So that all the things are achieved in the system at uh, simultaneously. And of course this error correction, error detection irrespective of talking about anywhere specifically, they are hidden in all protocols and all uh, secure communications because errors are to be handled. You wa we want to uh, get back what we actually have sent. So uh, I think that's the end of it. Thank you for any questions. Uh, we have time for one or two questions.